Hey, good day. It's Mike at Flex Radio, and today we're going to go through the uh, the episode where your buddy says you can borrow his radio remotely, as long as you're within the realms of your license, uh, certainly at least to receive. And if you need to transmit, by the way, make sure you, uh, you legally can do so, uh, and it's different for every country. So uh, we're going to teach you how to uh, where to find Smart SDR and download it, how the install works, how to log into it, and a little bit of the features of the control panel you're going to see. Uh, called Smart SDR. If follow on episodes. We'll do a little bit more in depth stuff and how can you how you can run uh, digital modes uh, fully remote. To start first, we're gonna uh, we're gonna go to our website. Obviously, I'm doing this just before Christmas, but under uh, software uh, Smart SDR for Windows, you can just click on that and um, you will see it uh, right here where it says Download Now. Click over to the Download Now, and we're going to download the installer. Uh, the installer, of course, is the software program you require to run Smart SDR. It's like any other program you've installed. Uh, we'll click Download. Uh, that'll take a moment. Uh, and please install like any other program. I'm not going to install it as part of this video, but uh, I'd like you to go through it. There will be a couple of the quick questions where you have to answer yes to, and uh, you'll be up and running fairly quickly. After you've downloaded 2.4.9 or whatever current version we're dealing with or that's current, um, you're going to end up with three icons on your desktop. They have the version number on the icon, but there's also Smart SDR Cat, that's for uh, computer tuning of your radio, your VFOs, and DAX, Digital Audio Exchange. We want the one that says Smart SDR 249. Once you start Smart SDR, you will see a screen that looks like this, and you go, wow, there's no radios here. Uh, there's a login that we need and a smart link setup. Don't worry about smart link setup. This is only for the remote operator. We're going to log in, and that will bring up a login screen. And I'm assuming most people will be using an email login and password. Um, I'm going to type mine in and log in to my radio. But, uh, of course, I've got it grayed out, so you can't see it. Um, I like you all, but I'm not sharing my radio with everybody. Um... And that will pop up, and eventually you'll see my radio. Uh, this will probably be your friend's name and call sign, or if it's your radio, it'll be your name and call sign. Uh, here's my radio. Low bandwidth connect is used uh, for a low internet connection. Probably don't need it, but just keep an eye on it if you need to try to test some latency issues. Uh, we're just going to highlight that and hit connect. And by the way, it is possible uh, if your friend has more radios or you, a bunch of you are sharing a login, you will see more radios here. Um, and we actually do that at work fairly often. So we're going to connect. And here we are in 40 meters. I am um, going to walk through some of the controls over here. Uh, we'll turn on the audio in a minute just uh, so you can hear things. Um, antenna, band, uh, you'll want to check with uh, if your user or whatever, the owner of the radio, what antennas to use. Um, this just shows receiving antenna, so let's uh, you can leave that for the moment. Oh, by the way, these are preamps. You can turn them on. I clearly don't need them on on 40 meters right now. This is uh, two different antenna settings. You get antenna one red and antenna one uh, blue. The red is the transmitting antenna, and the blue is the receiving antenna. You'll see that we have a receiving uh, antennas for uh, RXA and RXB. Uh, I have a 6600, so that gives me the ability to use double everything. Selecting the band here uh, is uh, quite obvious, and uh, the display is something we want to look up because of, because it can control how much data we actually send on the internet. And if you're if you're seeing a fair bit of audio breakup and such, then look at this and take this rate here and uh, start sliding it down, and it controls the waterfall at the bottom of the screen so that we have less updates. So. Uh, I have a reasonably good connection right now. This frame per second is also uh, controls the uh, 
how often the pan adapter in the top gets updated. I actually run it fairly slow on most times. The average, uh, you'll see if we flip it, it goes from that, which is sort of noisy, to I like it up here. Again, it's a personal preference. Uh, DAX uh, is not something we're going to use. Make sure that's set to none. And these are tracking not fi notch filters, and we use these to add a receiver slice. And what's a slice? It's like having a, another VFO active. Um, again, let's just, you can play with it, but you want to turn it on and off. If you happen to turn one on, uh, like I just did, and clicked on it, you can turn it off by clicking on this cl uh, close slice button. All right. So that's uh, that's that part over here. And we run over here to the right side. Uh, this is your RF power and SWR, real-time reading. RF power out. I happen to have mine set at 80 watts. My tune power is set to 10 watts so that when I push the tune button like this, I only put out 10 watts. Uh, phone CW settings. Uh, you can actually click these to disappear, but we'll leave them here for now. This shows me uh, my mic gain. This guy is my mic gain. We want to drop this down and uh, you'll have a lot of, you know, there are a lot of different profiles. Just for um, just for now, let's just set it to default or whatever he has. Uh, this microphone is really important. Uh, if you're going to start transmitting on the radio, you want to set that to PC as in personal computer. That means it's going to use the personal computer microphone on your computer, the default personal computer uh, like that. Uh, processor I would turn off if it's on. Uh, this is uh, some enhanced signal processing on the transmitter. It has to do with controlled envelope single sideband. Um, you can leave it off for the moment. Let's go down to phone. Uh, we turn that, as I said, we can turn that on and off. Uh, there's a scroll bar right here. A lot of information on this one. This shows us much like the flag uh, and the antennas we're on. It has transmit focus. That's why the red is there. That's our mode. We can change our mode. Our, our speakers and, our, uh, you know, our volume control, if we want it panned over to the left or right a little bit. Um, now, this is the most important one. It's not labeled, but it's called uh, Automatic Gain Threshold, A-G-C-T. Do not, I'd be surprised if anybody has to do that, do not run that at 100%. We're going to treat it like an RF gain, but only simply put. And uh, I'll explain that right now. We're going to go over here. I'm using my mouse knob as a VFO and sort of find a quiet spot. And uh, I can zoom in on that. And, uh, well, it's not that quiet. So we'll double click and go over here, hold the left mouse down, and I can drag over. And uh, there we're looking at a quiet spot. So let's now just turn on the audio. And... I should be able to speak over this. I'm going to slide this up and down. You'll hear it get louder. I'm going to now slide it down until we hear it just get a little lighter. So right there, about 38. And let me just turn that off. About 38. And that's for this moment where we're going to set the automatic gain threshold. With this set in the correct place, it deals with strong signals perfectly, but also the ability to hear weak signals. Um, so that's uh, keep an eye on that. That's pretty important. I'm going to use my mouse slit over here. Know that we're, notice that we're stepping at um, 100 hertz rates. That value is set right here. If you want to dial a little slower, you know, you can go down to 50. And there's 50 hertz steps. Um, so go back to 100. Here's our, our filters. Filter width. We want to go to you know you want a real wide one if you're a ESSB guy or you want to just limit some of the stuff you're hearing. Uh, and we'll turn that back on so you can hear the differences. Let's start at a 1.8 filter. And I have no idea what this person's talking about, but he's going to be recorded. I'll explain to you after we do this all. So you want to set that number to to one. Got it. Okay. Now go three numbers higher. That'll be 159, right? Yeah, that's EQ3BW2. True. Set that to number one. Add it. Okay. Now go. That's one thing I find a lot of hams do. We start working on what our transmitter sounds like. So I hope that helps. Now, um, there's EQ here uh, for setting uh, your transmit mic audio and your receive audio. I um, receive's pretty powerful. In fact, uh, you might want to play with that. Transmit, of course, is one we use all the time. 
Uh, this is, happens to be one setup I have for a particular mic. Uh, you can start with it off, which means the EQ is not in play. Um, I highly recommend when you're playing with your EQ, if somebody says boosts your highs, I would start by lowering your lows first and then uh, so that you use less first and then add as required. Um, now, how do you get into transmit? You've got your uh, mic working. Uh, for a remote person, the easy way is you're going to click, uh, let's go over here off frequency. You're going to click the MOX button. Like, like so. You'll also notice that the tune button, you might as well, I always press the tune button when I change bands. I want to check my SWR. Uh, there we go. And you'll notice when you press the MOX button here, that the red light, and we're actually transmitting, uh, this goes red. Uh, network quality, uh, which is down here beside the TX Ready. Remember, we're going to, uh, I'll show you that. That brings up a network diagnostics. It shows you your network status, your latency, in my case is about 100 milliseconds. That will be longer than any ping setting we look at. The max latency in this case is 855 milliseconds, well less than one second. That may be a little burst where we had some low and uh, the TX rate numbers are not working. I think that's a bug that needs to be repaired. Um, so we'll kill that. Uh, looking over here on the um, on the bottom left, oh, with some cool things. We can get rid of all this in the slice just by clicking on this, and we just see the frequency. We can go down here, and if we decide that the panel on the right-hand side is uh, not needed anymore, we can just close it by pressing this little uh, angel character. Uh, we can add a new pan adapter, and it's like a whole full receiver, all the same different settings. Uh, we're going to get rid of that pan adapter just for now. Way up here, we're going to click away. And uh, if you start playing with um, full duplex, which we often use for mic settings, uh, CWX allows us to send CW from a keyboard. In C you only come see that in CW mode. Tracking notch filters, which are all about this. And um, I jokingly, I'm going to zoom out here. Um, and those in the know will notice that I have a, tra a permanent tracking notch filter right here. And uh, if we dial up there, you might notice that it's right about, um, oh, I don't know, 7200. You can do your math. Uh, I'm going to speed up my display a little bit. and uh, But we are showing a fair bit of radio spectrum here on 40 on a Friday afternoon. And I think... Um, I think that's pretty much it, uh, and that should get you on the air. Uh, this looks like a bunch of FT8 signals, doesn't it? Let's uh, let's go over here and zoom in. Uh, of course, FB8 being as popular as it is, let's turn our audio on. And what do we have? Yep, a whole bunch of FT8. And let's see if everybody's got their clock set correctly. Boom. They're all off except one poor guy <laughs> right here, whoever that is. Anyway, I uh, I hope that's helped you out some. Uh, we uh, um, have uh, talked through a lot of things in a hurry uh, regarding uh, the Flex and um, how to connect remotely. Next one, we'll probably go on how to use uh, DAX and, and CAT and how to do digital operation uh, from a uh, remote site. Hope that helps. Have a good time. Uh, good luck with that. And, uh, oh, yeah, by the way, if you have any questions, um, feel feel free to jump into our Flex community at uh, community.flexradio.com. And uh, you'll see there's a whole bunch of questions and answers and great, wonderful people here with a lot of help. And uh, search through there. And if you go to YouTube and search on flexradio.com, just all like as you see it, you'll see our channel, Flex Radio Systems. Click on that. And we've got a couple of videos. In fact, that's probably where you found this one uh, on uh, works with flex, which are some of the toys that uh, people and software that people have written. Uh, how do use slice master uh, and a few other uh, excellent uh, videos that will help you out. Uh, and the pendant thermal installation, that's pretty old now. That's a, a problem long since solved. But uh, at least you get to see inside a radio and uh, we're good to go. Again, have a great evening. Great day. Uh, enjoy the uh, Enjoy the HF, and uh, we will uh, chat later.